everyone and welcome to session nine of Tutor Chat. So my name is Helen Dickman and I'm joined by Lucy Kennedy today. Hi guys. And uh, we both run the 11 Plus English Club together. So every week we share sort of tips and tricks and advice and help and support really based on like the most commonly asked questions that we get as tutors and sort of running our membership. So today we're talking about how to build your child's confidence. So at the time of recording this, we're sort of midway through August. So this is, I think, a really helpful thing for you guys, whether your child's coming up to exams in a couple of weeks or even you're just starting the process. Like you will I'm sure if you've listened to any of our videos before, we always talk about confidence and how it is just such a huge part of 11 plus success. So we're going to just sort of dip back and forth between us, give you guys some advice. And yeah, we hope you find it helpful. Lucy, over to you. Thank you very much. So yeah, just following on from what um, Helen said, really, confidence um, is somewhat the most important thing when it comes to, I think, anything in life, really, any challenges that we face, um, anything that we have to have to achieve in life, it's all down to confidence. If we're confident about it, then it's going to help us on our way to achieving that goal. So, um, and this doesn't just apply to academics. This is literally just your child's life and their livelihood and how they see things and challenges. So um, the first tip, that we suggest um, for helping to build confidence, but also resilience is to try new things. So um, offer your child just something for them to explore. Now this could be um, a topic that they've been interested in. This could be um, a hobby. This could be a sport. It's literally anything that maybe they're curious about and they think, yeah, I'd quite like to give that a try. Um, let them to let them you know try it for themselves see how they get on with it and it's no different to like a baby learning to I don't know like hold a cup or like stand up as soon as they've achieved that goal and they've tried it out it helps build their self-esteem it helps build on their confidence um, so try if you can as parents to see each new thing as a chance for your child to grow in their confidence and self-esteem um, so the more you kind of um, offer them and, you know, al allow them to explore and discover different things, the more likely it is that they're going to be able to actually grow in confidence themselves as human beings. Mm. And, and I think as well, like, I think for a lot of people, they feel like, oh, well, you know, this is the 11 plus, we don't have time for like starting these new sports and hobbies and, and you know, mm -hmm. don't get us wrong it is a fine balancing act between that kind of work-life balance but I think like one thing we say to all people is that you cannot predict what comes up in the 11 plus exams um you know some exam boards we have a framework that we know they're going to follow others could be totally different and mm -hmm. like this is why trying new things and confidence is so important because the likelihood is in the exam the kids are going to get faced with something they've never seen before or it's worded in a way that they don't recognize so the kids who are you know got that high level of resilience trying new things are so used to that almost like problem solving skills mm. you know mm. they're gonna they're gonna tackle that question they're gonna at least give it a go the kids who maybe you know are the opposite to this they're the ones who are gonna freeze that then use up time they're gonna skip it maybe not even attempt it because they don't recognize it so it's amazing how I think just all these little things from outside in their day to day can really impact that kind of like that their sort of approach to their exam in the mm. moment mm. so important yeah. um sorry Lucy we're gonna add that's okay no I was just gonna say it's, it's all about mindset isn't it we come come back to mindset so much and I think as, as soon as the mindset is is you know suitable and they they're in that right frame of mind then they're you know so much more likely to be able to mm. tackle different challenges definitely and I think another really big thing as well is like the role that we as like the tutors and parents and teachers, everybody around them, like mm -hmm. we have such an important role in this confidence building as well in terms of like basically being a bit of a, a positive role model. So something that do you know what like teaching English the age-old problem is reading <laughs> you know like it's it's such a default thing that we come back to but it but it honestly you know we, we, we I'm sure we'll do another episode one day Hobbs, dedicated <laughs> to reading <laughs> but I think like something that's honestly I think if I speak really honestly with experience that's a real challenge with students is 
you know, often parents sort of say to me, like, they don't read, my child doesn't read, they don't enjoy reading. But then when we scratch a little bit deeper, and we talk about kind of home life and what's going on, quite often parents or carers will say to me, I don't have time to read, or I don't like reading, or no, you wouldn't see me with a book. And the problem is that it's so difficult then for like us as tutors to then be saying to the kids, no, you should be reading all the time, because they're not sort of seeing that that behavior around them. And you know, as well, like as a tutor, don't get me wrong, as an adult, like I'm so busy. And even though I love English, it is sometimes hard to find time to read. But there's a part of me that's like, you know, this is a big part of my job. I can't be a hypocrite. I have to practice what I preach, you know. <laughs> and and ultimately as well, it, it's a great source of conversation with the kids because I can say to them, yes, I've read that book you're talking about, or I read this book, this is what I would recommend to you. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the thing we really encourage with parents as well, is like get involved in the reading process with them because especially if they're a reluctant reader and they find it difficult or challenging that they're going to start seeing reading time as almost like this punishment that they're being made to do by themselves separate from everybody else um so yes you know if you if parents if you want some recommended books let us know because we will be happy to sort of give you some suggestions as well but it but it honestly it it makes such a difference it's um it really helps the child with their confidence of like especially even like you know even if it's like a classic novel for example you know you could sit down with the kids and say actually I've got no idea what's going on here like let's look at this together like let's Mm -hmm. explore this together and talk about it and things like that and that is so great for their inference skills as well of like reading between the lines and context and understanding what's going on absolutely and I think children from the day they're born they are modeling our behavior Mm -hmm. as adults Mm -hmm. you know as parents as as grown-ups within their lives they model everything based on us so that's a really important thing to kind of take from this is that if they can see us winding down after a really hard day with a book you know Mm. then they're more likely to actually go and source their own book Mm. and just sit there and read for enjoyment for pleasure Mm. you know aside from any of this kind of like rigid study and like it can just be a way of winding down. I always suggest it for my students to do almost like bedtime reading that you would do for a younger child. Mm. Just, you know, guys, just choose a book that you love, that you really like the look of Mm. and just get into bed, lamp on and just read for like 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah, like, you know, nothing too strenuous. And then they can start to enjoy it. So yeah, absolutely, modeled behavior. Yeah, so next up, um, really important thing, our third tip uh, for building confidence is to praise the effort of your child, the perseverance of them and not their scores. Um, And again, it all ties in with modelled behaviour. You know, don't don't kind of be focusing on the percentages or the scores or, you know, how your child is is achieving. through their different classwork, homework, schoolwork, whatever it is. Um, Try not to be too obvious about, oh, that's that's an amazing score. You've made mummy so happy. Um, Because it also needs to be followed up with, and you've worked really hard this week on vocabulary. So I think that's why, you know, your score has improved this week is because of all that hard work and effort and time you've put into, um, you know word games and vocabulary or whatever it is for that week mm. and I think in that sense they kind of think well it doesn't necessarily matter about the score then you know that's just the icing on the cake like I've worked really hard and it's paid off I feel more confident and it's allowed me to get a higher score mm. even if it hasn't you know we need to I guess not allow our children to see if possible our gut reactions when it comes to like looking at a bad score or a score that we think is a lot worse than it should be Mm -hmm. try not to um kind of react in a bad way in front of them it's different if you first see the score and they're nowhere to be seen and you're like oh my goodness like like what's happening what's going on that's only natural for us especially with things like mock exams Mm -hmm. um but again, you, you don't want your child to see those reactions because that's just going to create these immense feelings of guilt. Firstly, they're going to be like, oh, no, but I've made mum and dad sad because I've you know not performed how they thought I would. And um, just kind of leave it as, OK, this isn't what we expected this week, 
but there's a reason for it there's always a reason for it mm. and if you kind of approach it in that sense then you're celebrating those mistakes you're you're never ever going to um discourage your child from study and from working harder to improve their scores um yeah exactly. so yeah yeah, and, and, and I think as well, sort of like following on from that, like in, like we always say this about mocks, you know, like uh, we, you know, so at the moment, the time that's recording in August, we're doing lots of mock exams with our students inside the club. Mm. And like one of the big things we say to them all is like, you know, at the end of the day, guys, your scores, your scores are important. They're important because they help us see gaps and things like that. But ultimately, this is the time to make mistakes. Like if anything, if the kids are sort of, you know, flying through it and things it makes you sort of think well how on if there may be areas we've missed here and things like that so you know I think when we've worked with kids before we we've almost got them to kind of like celebrate like we say these mistakes and be like yes like I'm so glad I made this silly mistake today you know yeah. two plus two is five <laughs> because yeah. because I said you know we always say to them like that means you know and, and I always say to them I say like think about how you feel now think about like oh it's so annoying it's so frustrating like you know you know the right answer mm -hmm. I said but come the day of the exam you will remember those feelings and you'll remember to not make that silly mistake again like mm -hmm. this is why mocks and practice and things are so important it's not it, it is giving you a benchmark it is giving you an idea of like the level and where the gaps are in the knowledge but it's also just giving them the opportunity to fail and and to make mistakes and get it wrong you know and and if anything you can't fail a mock you know there isn't there isn't a pass or fail score it's mm. ultimately like we say we use it as a tool to to find gaps in their knowledge and things like that so yeah i think i think a lot of pressure sometimes gets put on the kids with mocks and and it's it's I don't know maybe sometimes used in the wrong way like it should it should be seen more as this learning tool rather than big series this is it this is the test kind of attitude yeah because and I think this process doesn't change I can remember for example my GCSE mocks and I can remember the results being way off yeah. what I actually achieved <laughs> and when I got the mocks it was almost like oh my goodness me what's like I've worked really hard what's happened yeah. um but saying that, yeah, <laughs> but saying that, that kind of, um, I guess, I guess that that moment of, oh, no, mm. spurred me on even more to think I refuse to get those grades when I do actually sit my GCSEs and get the results for real, Yeah, you know totally and, and, and it is sometimes it can be really motivating like you know that sort of fast forwarding a few years this is why schools do mock exams it's mm -hmm. nine times out of ten it's just to give you know the, the teenagers a bit of a wiggle on and show them actually mm -hmm. come on this is how much more you need to do so mm -hmm. I think you know if, if you're a parent listening to this and your child is sort of in I don't know year three year four um don't need to be worrying about mocks just yet but I think especially year four if you're starting year five in September one thing we'll be doing in the club is we'll be starting to do probably like an introductory mock workshop around winter time maybe like february sort of time um and the idea of that is just sort of showing and demonstrating this is what mocks are all about and mm -hmm. then it's something that we'll gradually sort of add in on on like a monthly basis and spread it out um mm -hmm. but yeah that the whole idea behind this is to kind of showcase to the kids look this is where you are now this is where you need to be but, you know, let's use this as a motivation tool of what, you know, what we can achieve in this time. So absolutely. And I think deep down, children know their strengths. Mm -hmm. They know the areas that they can achieve marks in. They, they do understand that. And, you know, um, by the same token, they, they know the areas that require a bit more work or the questions that come up where they will struggle or it takes them a bit more time. Yeah. Um, so mocks usually aren't a huge surprise it's more just like yeah a bit of a you know motivation really just to keep on plodding through and to apply as much as you can of those strengths mm. and work on the weaknesses mm, exactly yes and, and next think, up so yeah so our last one is actually about focusing on strengths isn't it? i think you just touched on that but um also small goals do you want to jump on that <laughs> yeah so um small goals i think super important so with confidence we have to um take it one step at a time it's no it's no different to us as adults you know all of these phrases that fly around in our lives it's it's the same for kids mm -hmm. take it one step at a time um and set yourself or set your child 
along alongside them so um after kind of discussing different things to do with their studies and um just set set some manageable goals and they can be really small ones they don't have to be too long term they can literally be just a few steps that your child can take over the next few weeks that they want to accomplish things that they think yeah as soon as I've done that I think I'm ready you know or as soon as I've had a go at those sorts of questions and can do them with ease or within a certain time frame mm -hmm. yes I'll feel a lot more confident mm -hmm. and it's yeah the same in adulthood we set goals once we achieve them there is that sense of oh, okay I've done it it's okay you know it's taken time it's taken effort it's probably taken money or whatever but it's it's happened and I've done it and I've achieved it mm. um and as long as you can focus on those if your child does have any wobbles and they kind of have days where they're like oh I can't do this this is too hard be like hey remember that goal that we achieved last week mm. that was you know epic you managed to do xyz and you did it really well and that's a huge tick mm. um so again yeah focusing on those and uh just using those goals as as like a list to work through yeah and I think as well like the 11 plus can sometimes feel like this one big huge goal like you know like, like, like Lucy says you know really the whole concept of goal setting is is it's uh, for young kids for us as adults in our offices you know I'm sure if you've been in an office you've had training on smart goals and things like that you know <laughs> we're all familiar with these things um but it's very similar and and you know I think it's really important with the 11 plus to break it down into kind of small bite-sized goals rather than this big whole just thing of I must pass the 11 plus or, no. you know, it's like pass or fail it's all or nothing you know it no. kind of feels feels very daunting it feels like this massive mountain that the kids are looking up at that is like almost unachievable so yeah I think like exactly as Lucy says if you can break down the different subjects the different areas the different skills into just tiny little tick boxes no. it, it, it can help you as well visually you can even create like a checklist for it depending on you know what, what you wanted to do and it could very visually help you to kind of see the progress you're making as well as you go through which again is a huge confidence booster yeah absolutely and to look back on everything that you have achieved over the past year or 18 months or whatever it is you know that's that's incredible for a child to be able to do mm. and I think I mean we do this within our mock tests don't we like we when we start our mock workshops we actually say to the kids right here are our main aims today and they're really simple aims it's not like we're going to aim for 75 percent or we're going to mark our work and know that we've like achieved whatever it is um, we just say we want to answer every question and we want to complete this test on time, mm -hmm. like in timed conditions. Mm -hmm. And they're the only goals. And when we get to the end and we're like, OK, pencils down, time's up. We've pretty much already achieved those goals. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, right, who finished every question? Every one of them. Um, and you've all done it within a time frame. So, yeah, tick, tick. It doesn't have to be like we have to get every single question correct in the next mock test or, mm. you know, because those goals are just too unachievable mm. and uh, too daunting for children. Yeah, there's, there's so much pressure, isn't there? Like, I don't I I'm, it's a it's a really tough one because I think with the 11 plus, like ultimately, we know the highest, the higher the score, the higher the chances of getting into the school. But like personally, I think like. Lucy I think you and I as tutors like we're not the kind of tutors who will say to kids like pushing them for this like 100% goal mm -hmm. you know because it's just I think in one breath the exams aren't designed to be like that they're not designed for this it's not like the, the Friday spelling test they do where they are meant to be getting 100% in it you know it's very different to that and I just think from like a, a long-term mindset of education and learning and just self-development even as an adult like like you know I think when you read about sort of psychology and things like that perfectionism is such a huge problem I guess in many ways that people have and when I say problem I mean like it holds people back um Lucy and I've talked about this like we we have it ourselves you know yeah. we are we are perfectionists in many ways um and it's tough you know and, and, it, and it takes a lot of work as an adult to kind of move through this and mm. and you know keep putting things out there and helping people and doing things and, and I think for me it's important with young kids is to not kind of I don't know instill that belief that you know unless it's everything unless it's 100% it's not good enough um yeah. it's going to make like their academic and professional lives and personal mm -hmm. lives as well I think 
very challenging for them so yeah absolutely yeah absolutely okay good stuff guys right we hope this has been helpful we've sort of flown through five tips here i guess with you um about confidence and building confidence so we've we've kind of done a bit of a mixture really for you of like sort of just general like you know we talked about role modeling and sort of how to like praise and things like that and also down to a bit of specifics of like actually breaking down goals with within um your preparations and things like that but I think like ultimately as we both said like confidence is such a huge part of the 11 plus um and and really makes such a big difference so yes if you're watching this video and you've got any questions about your child's confidence or you feel like they maybe need a bit more support and things with it then we are always happy to help and support you so you can get in touch with us through website social media commenting on the videos anything we we keep an eye on all the social media channels <laughs> always switched on but otherwise <laughs> thank you so much guys for watching um any more information about the club and everything is also all in the links below so thank you so much and we will see you for next week's episode thanks guys bye. take care bye, bye.